In this video, I'll work through some sample problems where we work on problems involving properties of relations. So in this first few examples, we'll look at a relation that we'll call R1. So R1, the domain and the codomain are both the set of integers, so z and z. And a pair a comma b gets into this relation if it has the property that a plus 2b is even. And the question is asking, is R1 reflexive? So what we have to do is think to ourselves, what does it mean for a relation to be reflexive? So R1 is reflexive means that a comma a is in my relation R1 for all a in my set, which in this case is the set of integers. So in order to understand that, we might just try some numbers. So think of your favorite integer, maybe it's 5. So think to yourself, is 5 comma 5 in my relation R1? Get, this helps you get a sense of whether or not you think this might be true. So my a is 5, my b is also 5, and 5 plus 2 times 5 works out to be 15. 15 is not even, so that means that 5 comma 5 is not in R1. But in order for, me to, for this relation to be reflexive, all of the pairs a comma a have to be in R1. And here we found one that isn't, and so that means that not all of those pairs are in this relation, and so the relation is not reflexive. So our answer here would be no, and this would be our counterexample. Moving on, same relation. Now the question is, is this relation transitive? And again, we have to know what that vocabulary word means. So transitive is an if-then. Transitive says, if a comma b is in your relation, in this case r1, and b comma c is in your relation, then a comma c is in your relation. And it's usually helpful to think about transitivity visually. So if a we think of as a dot, b we think of as a dot, c we think of as a dot. This, what this says is if there's an arrow from a to b and there's an arrow from b to c, then you can take the shortcut and just go directly from a to c. So that's what this would say. And again, we can try to investigate this. So what we want to find are values of a, b, and c, where a comma b is in my relation and b comma c is in my relation, and then I try to figure out whether a comma c is in my relation. So I have to think of two numbers where a plus b is even, so lots of ways to do this, but maybe 4 comma 3. But I also want b comma c to be in my relation, and I'm going to have a hard time pairing 3 up with anything. So let's discard that and try again. How about 6 comma 2? 6 plus 2 times 2, that's 10, that's even. And 2 comma 5, 2 plus 2 times 5, that's 12, that's also even. So 6 would be my A, 2 would be my B, 2 would be my B, and C would be 5. So A comma B is in my relation, B comma C is in my relation, is 6 comma 5 in my relation? Well, I look and see that 6 plus 2 times 5 is 16, and so the answer there would be yes. So we can play around with these uh, with these examples, but what we're going to find is that anything we try where the hypothesis of our if-then is true, it's going to make the conclusion true. So if we think the answer is yes, then that means we have to prove it. So we're proving an if-then. So just like we do any time we prove an if-then, we're going to start by making the hypothesis true. So we're going to let a, b, and c be integers such that my hypothesis is true. a comma b is in my relation R1, and B comma C is in my relation R1. What does that mean? Well, that means that A plus 2B is even, and B plus 2C must also be even. And just like we've done a million times, what does even mean? So A plus 2B is 2K, and B plus 2C is 2L, for some integers k and l. And our goal is to show that a comma c is in my relation. So my goal here, what I'm thinking to myself is, is a plus 2c even? That's what I'm trying to shoot for. So I've got a plus 2b in my equation, and I've got b plus 2c so I got to think about what I can do with that information. Well, the first equation has an a in it, and I can solve that equation for a. So a plus 2c, this thing that I'm hoping to be even, well, I know that that's going to be 2k minus 2b plus 2c. I'm getting that from the first equation, but I can factor a 2 out of that. 
So I get two times K minus B plus C, and that's even, which is even. So that means that A comma C is in my relation R1, and therefore, I'm going to squeeze it in the bottom here, therefore, R1 is transitive. Got it. There we go. Squeeze that E in the corner there. So that's how that would go. You kind of investigate, you play around with the numbers. If you think it's true, then you go through a proof. Okay, so now we're moving on to a new relation here. So this time our set is the real numbers, and the relation is that u comma v gets into my relation if u minus v is rational. So this time the question is, is R2 irreflexive? Now, the tendency here is to think that the word irreflexive just means not reflexive, but that's not what it means. So when we think about irreflexive, what we're saying is that a comma a is not in my relation for all a, in this case in my set, is the real numbers. So what we're saying here is that this relation should contain no pairs where the first number and the second number are the same. It should contain absolutely zero of those, right? Not some do and some not. Irreflexive means it has zero of those double pairs. But we can think of some, some examples here, right? So remember, real numbers contain the rational numbers. So we could think of a uh, pair like 3 fifths comma 3 fifths and 3 fifths comma 3 fifths. That's zero, which is rational. That's in Q. And so here we found a counterexample, and there's lots and lots of counterexamples. So the answer here would be no, and there's our counterexample. So again, playing around with numbers here is a good first step, no matter what it is you're trying to think about. All right, and this one, this last one, we're asking is R2 anti-symmetric? Okay, so again, anti-symmetric doesn't just mean not symmetric. We're gonna talk about symmetric a little bit later. Anti-symmetric is an if-then. So anti-symmetric says, if A comma B is in your relation, in this case R2, then B comma A should be not in your relation. And again, visually what this says is all of the arrows in our diagram are one way. So if this is A and this is B, this says if there's an arrow from A to B, then there is definitely not an arrow from B back to A. All of the arrows only go one way. Okay, and again, we can start playing around with this. So what we'd be looking for are numbers A and B where A comma B is in my relation, but B comma A isn't, all right? Well, so we start with A comma B being in our relation. So again, you can be as creative as you want here. So maybe you have a pi and then pi minus a half. In this case, that's my A, that's my B, and A minus B, that's pi minus pi minus a half, that's a half, and that's rational. So that pair of numbers would be in my relation. So now our hypothesis is true. So this is a potential counterexample. Now let's check the conclusion. The conclusion asks about B comma A, whether that's in my relation. So that's my B and that's my A. So B minus A, that's gonna be pi minus a half minus pi. That's negative a half, but that's also rational. And so this is a counterexample that shows that this relation is not anti-symmetric. The answer is no. And then again, this is my counterexample. 